Hi everyone, Tim Topham here again. Uh, in the middle of uh, this month's blog and podcast theme, which is all about oral, uh, so listening skills for students, uh, being able to recognise uh, music that they hear, being able to play things that they hear, hopefully as well. So they're the kind of two main skills that I associate with oral training for students. But unfortunately, a lot of the time, the only experience students get of oral as, as an activity is in exams and assessments and auditions when they're asked to tell me what interval I just played. Uh, and of course that can be pretty uh, overwhelming for students, particularly if they haven't had any opportunity to actually practice these skills beforehand. Um, I've been an accompanist for many, many years while I've been working in schools and one of the things I was always asked to do by teachers of other instruments would be, oh, Tim, can you just run through some oral tests with my student? Uh, and this is a week before their exam. Uh, and I just think, you know, no, that, it, that is just the wrong way to go about oral tests. It's not just something we should be doing because an exam board uh, needs to have that checked off in, in, a, in a performance exam. It should be something that we're doing all the time with students. But, of course, it's incredibly difficult uh, to find activities which will make this kind of practice fun for students unless we think a little bit outside the box. And so that's what this whole month on the blog and the podcast is all about. Today though, on this live video, I want to test your own oral against two of the exam board's oral tests at grade 6 level. So regardless of where you are in the world and whether you use these two exam boards, it doesn't really matter. But I thought, I'll just compare them. I want to show you the kinds of differences that are out there in the, t the tests that exams do, uh, exam boards offer, uh, and also see what you are like yourself. See how you would stack up if you were to put in one of these grade six exams. So uh, let's start the, uh, start the little test, see how you go. The first test is from the Australian Music Exam Board, the AMEB, and this is at grade six level. The expectation for all of their exams at grade six level. Uh, and it starts with pitch recognition, or interval recognition, I should say. So I'm gonna play you an interval, a couple of intervals, and you need to hum them after I've played them. I'll play them twice. And then you need to tell me what interval they are. And it could be any major or minor interval of the, uh, sorry, harmonic minor or major scale. Okay, so you get something like this. And you'd hum them. And then you'd tell me what that was. What is it? That would be a perfect fifth. Uh, or you'd get something like this. And that was, of course, a minor third. Uh, or this. Can you pick what that one was? Major seven. Okay, so that would be the first set of questions, all about pitch and interval recognition. The second question at grade six level is that I'll play a triad and you need to tell me what position it's in, root position or inversion. So here's your first one, see, see how you go, don't look at my hands. Can you tell by listening what inversion that is? That was a second inversion. Uh, what about this one? Position. And one more of those. Uh, let's try this one. Just did the same chord twice, didn't I? So that was second inversion. So they're the kinds of things that you would need to be doing if you were uh, doing this grade six level uh, assessment. Now, if you're live on this call, uh, give me a little bit of a, uh, a hello if you'd like to, um, and let me know how you're going with these. Now, the next question is probably the hardest. I think this is one of the trickiest questions that students could get asked in an oral test. See how you go with this one. This is a challenge. I'm going to play a sequence of four dyads, so notes, two notes together, and you're going to hum me back or sing me back the top line first, and then we'll do a different one, and you've got to sing the bottom line. This is actually a great activity for students. I'm actually 
uh, quite supportive of this as an oral test, but unless students are practicing this regularly, it's incredibly difficult, particularly the lower line. So try this one. I'm going to play a sequence of these four chords, uh, they're two note chords, uh, hum humming back to the top line. I'll play it twice. So, give yourself a thumbs up if you got that one right. Let's try the harder one, which is the bass line. So, could you help me the bass line, the lower of these two notes this time? Here we go. Uh, great to see Angela on the call. Angela's actually an AMEB examiner, so she'll know all of these tests inside out. Good to see you, Angela. Uh, so that's actually, that's a hard question. Uh, I'd be interested to know how you go. I didn't see any uh, thumbs up moving across the screen, so maybe that was a harder question. Um, I'd be interested too to know from Angela, I, I find that uh, a lot of the examiners will ask pianists in particular for the lower notes when they do this uh, assessment in particular. Um, I think because pianists, I mean, we should be able to decipher bass lines. I think it's an important skill. It's why I love doing this in a practical sense with pop songs, as you heard about on last week's podcast. Uh, tune into that if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, that's a great way to build this skill without sitting in a lesson and expecting students to try and practice this at home or do it in a lesson, because it's not a very interesting activity because it's not very musical when it's in the construct of an assessment like this. Um, yeah, so I find, find that um, that's asked for, for, for piano students in particular, bass lines are asked for quite regularly. It's a tricky one. Okay, and the uh, last question uh, at this grade 6 level for AMEB is cadences. So I'm going to play you a little excerpt. Could you tell me whether it's a perfect or plagal cadence at the end? And that one was, of course, Plagal Cadence. Okay, so they're the kinds of questions you'd get at grade 6 level for an AMEB examination over here in Australia. Uh, let me know how you went. Give us, give us a thumbs up uh, now that the test is finished, if you did okay in that one. Um, what I'm going to now do is compare it to a very different style of test, and this is from Trinity. So Trinity College London, uh, they actually revamped their oral tests um, a few years ago, and they've, they've really uh, taken a completely different approach to what the AMEB has done. So I'd be interested to see what you think of this one, and also how you go with it. Uh, so in this... Uh, oral test. So again, it's grade six for Trinity. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be playing you a piece of music and you're going to be telling me about that piece. So it's kind of oral test but in a musical context. So the first question, I'm going to play a short piece of music twice and what you need to do is tell me whether... Um... So you need to tell me the time signature first and then comment on the main features of the piece, such as phrasing, style, and dynamics. You'll have the opportunity to give comments after the first and or the second playing. So I'll play it twice, and you can tell me after the first one or the second one, some of those features, the time signature, and the main features of phrasing, style, and dynamics. So here's a piece of music. Have a think about what you would say in an exam if you were being assessed. to those questions. Okay, so first 
Firstly, time signature. What was the time signature of that one? Yeah, despite the syncopation, definitely in 4-4 four, four time, hopefully you got that one right. Uh, what, what other things would you, would you tell me about phrasing? And it's interesting here too, in the notes that Trinity actually provide, which are really comprehensive for teachers and for students, uh, it asks about, uh, it actually gives you some, some suggestions here about phrasing. Phrases uh, where the breaths are occurring two and four bar lengths. Um, if the phrasing is the same each, each time through the piece, then it's considered regular. If they're all different lengths, then it's irregular. So these are suggestions that students could comment on. Um, and style, listen to the features such as the shape of the melody, harmony, how the dynamics and expressive detail are used, how the different sections of the music relate to each other. These all give clues to the style of the music. And dynamic changes, hopefully I made them relatively obvious. Um, let me know if you, you gathered some dynamic changes in there. There certainly were some. Uh, I probably could have made the articulation a little bit more obvious perhaps. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, what would you say for style of this? It's definitely quite a modern modern style. It's got a kind of um, rolling along steadily kind of kind of pace to it. Um, they're definitely regular articulation in one bar chunks really. And then there's some air. But again, I wasn't you know, as clear as I should have been if I was going to be actually assessing a student in this. Um, interestingly enough too, in their instructions, Trinity say what the question is for. What's the point of this question? The que this question is to learn and recognise the time signature of a piece, to develop skills in recognising how the music is being played, and to learn words to describe what you hear. Totally love this. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I ask students about musical things, so often they'll say things like, oh yeah, it's kind of nice, or it's loud, or um, it's kind of like... Like, the, like the, they, they, they actually struggle to use musical vocabulary unless I push them and I'll say, okay, come on, uh, come on, Samantha, use your musical words now and <laughs> really encourage them to actually use, because they know these words. It's just that if we don't actually quiz them on it very often, uh, they get a little bit lost. Um, so using those words, articulation, phrasing, staccato, legato, uh, and all of those things is so important. So that's question one anyway. So now question two, I'm going to play the final section of the piece once and you're going to tell me what cadence comes at the end. Perfect, imperfect, playable or interrupted. And the purpose of this question is to give skills in recognising chord progressions and phrase endings and learn the words to describe what you hear. Okay, so I'll play the ending of this again. Uh, and tell me what the final cadence is. And the final cadence was... Hopefully you've all said perfect cadence. Uh, so that's nice. And there's, again, there's some suggestions here. Hints. Make sure you know the four cadences, what they sound like in a major key at, the, in, at this particular level. Perfect cadence, playable cadence, imperfect and interrupted. Um, so that's question two, all about cadences. So again, uh, similar to the Amy B, I mean, they ask for cadences, but again, just in the context of one piece of music. All right, question three. What the examiner will do, play the key chord of the opening of the piece and state the key, and then play once a section of the piece which modulates. What you're gonna be asked to do is to tell me where into which key the music has modulated. The dominant, subdominant, or relative minor. And you could either say a chord name, it's modulated to G or D or whatever it is, or you could say it's modulated to the relative minor or dominant. Okay, so this is developing skills in recognizing key changes and modulations and learning the words to describe what you hear. They're quite big on this uh, in, at uh, Trinity. Uh, so here we go, let's do, okay, so the tonic chord, the key, piece, key of the piece is in G major, and here's the modulation, and I will play it how many times? Just once you'll get this. So, tonic chord. So how are your ears? You work out where that is modulated to. That's a, that's a bit of a tricky question, I think, and that would require some definite student practice in 
uh, listening, obviously, but I think it's also great. I love when I'm doing four chord composing with my students in particular, uh, creating a chord progression for an A section, then in the B section saying to students, well, where could we modulate? Where could we start this chord progression? And one of the most common is relative minors, so students get quite used to that relationship. Uh, but you could also, of course, modulate to the subdominant or dominant. And so if you're doing these assessments, that could be a really useful activity to help students with this. So it modulated to D major, which is the dominant. Okay, hopefully you got that one. Uh, question... Uh, let's see. Oh, and there's a number of hints again about this one and listening to where things are coming from and also it talks in here about the circle of fifths and students knowing those relationships, which I think is great too. And then question four, the last question at this grade level, grade six for Trinity says uh, that the examiner will give you a printed copy of the piece and then they'll play the piece twice in a version with two changes to the top melody. They may be to rhythm, pitch or articulation. And so you're then asked where the changes took place, so to point to them and say what they were. Oh, that rhythm was different. Oh, that note was changed. So what this question is for, to develop musical memory, to develop awareness of rhythm, pitch and articulation, to develop skills in relating to the music you see, uh, relating the music you see to what you hear, great skill as well, and improving the accuracy of your reading. So I won't obviously do this one because it's uh, not really possible um, over the Facebook system here. Um, but I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of just two different exam boards and their approach at a grade six level. Uh, how did you go? Were we, and which one did you like more? Which one did you feel uh, could be more helpful for students perhaps? And why? Let's start a little bit of a conversation here. Um, please, pop a, pop a comment down. Um, you've seen two very different approaches to oral tests. Uh, which one did you like? Which one do you think your students would benefit more from uh, and why? Let's, let's have, a, have a bit of a chat about it. Um, while you're doing that and, and putting some thoughts down, oh, you should also let me know how you went. Were they easy? Pretty easy? Or actually pretty hard? Um, we've all come from different backgrounds as teachers when it comes to the piano teaching that we're doing. So, you know, some of us have had university training, but often, often we haven't. Uh, and so it's totally cool if, if you found that really quite difficult. That's, that's absolutely fine. But what I'd be saying is, well, this is a great opportunity to start improving your own skills and therefore help your students improve theirs too. And that's why I've focused this entire month on oral training and skills for students because you know, I, I, I do get um, a little dismayed sometimes when oral skills... So the skills of listening and singing um, are just left to this tiny little assessment kind of time of the year. It shouldn't be the case. And that's why more and more I'm getting my students singing, definitely singing a lot in lessons. It is so important. It helps improve their ear. If they can sing, they tend to be able to play better. Um, and singing also uh, helps them hear, hear what they're doing better. So it actually improves not only their playing of written music, but it improves their ability to improvise too. That's what I'm finding. Uh, and I still get frustrated sometimes when students clearly aren't actually listening to what they're doing <laughs> at, the, uh, at the piano. Uh, they'll play something and I'll ask them, I don't want to tell them what's wrong with it, I want them to know what's wrong with it or what they could improve. I'll say, okay, well, what would you improve? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, were you listening? Not really. Uh, well, why not? Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't know if you find that as well. Give me a thumbs up if, if you've ever felt the same way <laughs> with students. And that's why I try desperately to not always tell them what's wrong, but to get them to tell me what they need to do, because that's what they have to do in their lessons, of course. Uh, anyway, now a couple of uh, reminders about what's coming up. Tomorrow morning, uh, Eastern Time, Friday morning is the release of my podcast each week, as you probably are aware. And tomorrow's podcast is about making oral fun. So ways in which you can use games in your lessons to improve students' listening skills and improvising and things like that. I've got a great guest on the show who I know you'll love uh, and a great giveaway too of, uh, in fact, I've got it here somewhere. No, I can't find it quickly. Of it's a little four-step plan of how to teach a little song by ear. It's a great way to get started, really easy to do for anyone. 
And then uh, the week after that, I'm really happy to have Christopher Sutton joining me on the podcast. Uh, and we're talking about sulfur and solfege and how do re means and all that can help students. And I learned a lot from this interview. I recorded it just a couple of days ago and it's really, really good and really made me think uh, because that was not an approach I was taught with when I was first learning, but it has some huge benefits for students uh, and teachers. So I hope you will uh, look out for that one. And then we've actually got a free live training as always towards the end of the month. Uh, this time is all on how to make oral fun in your studio. Uh, and I hope you'll be able to join us for that. The link and all the details I'll be releasing next week. Oh, by the way, next week on Facebook, I'm gonna do another one of these little live and I'm gonna do a roundup of about six exam boards and compare what they ask for at the different levels. So it's not gonna be a test like today was for you, but more a little bit of a summary so you can see the variety of approaches that these exam boards are using. So we'll cover the ABRSM, both their classical and jazz syllabus, Trinity, ANSCA, uh, which is Australian New Zealand Cultural Arts. We will uh, have a look at Rock School as well. Uh, a whole different subsection of exams at grade three level this time. And you'll actually get to hear and see the differences um, in those assessments. And, and hopefully, uh, the, the whole point for me doing this is, is to I guess give you an outline that, uh, or an overview of what's available for students out there, um, not just in assessments, but also in, in different training approaches for the year, uh, but also to, to get you to start thinking about ways in which you can make this skill of oral training practical, which is so important. Practical and relevant, I think. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, this is brilliant. Uh, uh, so this is from uh, Paydar, is it? Sorry, I can't see the name. Paydar Rafferty. Sorry if I'm not saying your name right. I do apologise. Um, I can't see the whole comment, but um, I got both correct. That's good. Oh, perfect pitch. Oh, that does help. <laughs> but I'm finding, finding sight reading very difficult. Uh, sight reading is not what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, that's uh, that's another another whole topic. Um, so look, I won't get into that right now. Um, we'll just just focus on the oral. I do have paid uh, quite a few resources on my site about sight reading, particular resources that I really like for students. Um, and it's not, I don't think sight reading is just about playing a whole lot of music and to get better. That, that is an approach and it will work in the long run, but uh, giving students skill and understanding of the music, the background behind music is so much more important to their ability to read fast. And that's why I'm really passionate about harmony and chords in particular um, for that. But anyway, uh, just focusing on the oral side of things. So next week I'll do that wrap up of a number of different exam boards. Uh, I'll be at the piano, we'll, we'll run through some of them just like today. And then do look out for both of the next podcasts and also check out last week's where I actually demonstrated um, at the piano how I turned a rap song into an oral activity for a student. It was an Eminem song that someone brought into a lesson and how I went about teaching them to play this song by ear. That is oral in practice that's relevant. You can't get better than that for a student. Um, so if you're you know, finding it's a bit of a drag to uh, just play intervals for students and, and help them improve that way, then see if you can make it more fun for one and more practical by putting it in a musical context. I think it's a great approach. So, we'd love to hear your comments about uh, either of the assessments that you did today and how you went, what you thought about them, and any other questions that you've got about oral in your uh, students' lessons. Um, until next time, so next week, probably about the same time, uh, we'll see you later. Have a great weekend coming up, and thanks for the thumbs up, whoever just sent that across the screen. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, please share. There's a button down here too. Uh, please share this around and let other people know so that uh, other people can learn from this as well. That's really appreciated. Okay, everyone, bye-bye.